Good morning, I've got data for the day for the week beginning the 26th of August 2024. So you come to Discord and you're going to download the file and you're going to come to your downloads file here. So um, right click, properties, and you're going to unlock it. Okay, so it's important that you unlock it because it will block the macro. So apply, okay, and you're going to double click it. And then it will ask one more warning, which you just click okay or allow. And uh, there's the enable content. All right, so let's look at this, but we'll bring this, well, we'll maximize it and then we'll just look at the chart page and then we'll do it side by side with the sheet so we can see how the retail sentiment are positioned. So you're gonna right click, you're gonna to come to chart page, right click the net non comms, look at the euro FX, okay, that pumped, uh, move chart, move sheet, net non comms. Okay, so we're going to put this side by side. Uh, let's put this over here. It's there. So right, we can see that the euro is strong. We can see the dollar is weak. There's the euro, and the dollar has ticked down slightly, um, eighteen thousand to seventeen thousand. So the big fish, the banks, the you know the institutions, they are still bullish on the dollar, but they're less bullish than the week prior. However, they're actually going quite bullish on the euro. And that's obviously looking at interest rate expectations. They're looking at the ECB. They're looking at the Fed. And they're looking at that divergence between the two uh, central banks, basically. So uh, that makes sense fundamentally and uh, sentimentally, as you can see. This QDB scores that you can see, it takes into account technical, sentiment, and fundamentals. So it's really, really, really powerful. Okay, and note that the dollar is weaker than the yen as well. So let's look at the yen. I think the yen's gonna have, um, well, show signs of a bit of slowdown because it was absolutely on a tear and it was going pretty bonkers. <laughs> There's the yen, right? So it's just gone slightly sideways. Still positive, we're net positive now, which is really interesting. And it's just ease its ascent. It's still strong, but it's just, less crazy than it was the week prior because the week prior just really surged um so still strong uh, but we have to remember if we look at the qdb scores we've got a weak score and that takes into account like i say the technicals that looks at the pivots it looks at your daily and weekly open and things like that and it looks at sentiment are they long are they short it looks at fundamentals so it looks at the interest rate it looks at the unemployment, it looks at the GDP, and all those things. It even looks at the COP data. This this even takes into account this. So it's very, very, very powerful, the QB scores. Okay, now we normally look at the bubbles, but these are slightly more powerful than the bubbles because the bubbles are sentiment only. These, these are sentiment, technical, and fundamental. So I think looking at the QB scores is probably better going forward, okay? So we'll take the euro off. We know it's strong. Um, Put on Aussie. Okay, let's see what Aussie's done. Uh, Aussie's ticked slightly higher, 42 to 38, and we've got a good score on the Aussie. Okay, so you know this is how you could probably use it. Be aware with the Australian dollar is that we are below zero, so we're net negative. However, they're just going slightly long than the week prior. Okay, Aussie off, pound on. Pound ticked higher, which makes sense. We've got a good score, 47 to 67. So it's quite an increase. Um, so that's of note. Okay, so remember you're just looking at stuff here to coincide with this. This is the banks, this is the retail stuff, okay? Um, banks, CAD. CAD ticked up higher, but we've got a negative score. So you'd want to be a little bit careful there. There's a, like a discrepancy between the COT data and the QDB metrics. So we've got a poor score, not as poor as these two, but they, it is negative. However, that's slightly positive than we prior. This is a very heavy selling. Uh, so we probably have to come to an end of that selling. It was just very uh, relentless uh, shorting of the CAD. So that's that, okay. Uh, CAD off, gold on. Gold's going to be interesting. Of course, we're ticking higher. Uh, 238 to 291. <laughs> so it's really strong. It's worth noting that the herd are still short on gold. 
and if they remain short we'll go we'll continue to go higher okay so it's really important is that there's no rationale for gold to fall if they're heard or short because it does mean that they get paid but as soon as they go net long we'll probably top out and then we can fall so this is basically just coming up to punish uh, retail and to seek liquidity um, the retail are a really good form source of liquidity and so if we can come up and get stops on the way up you could probably say it's going to come up anyway but if it's going to come up and take some stops it's like a double win it's a win-win situation uh, for those market makers who are pushing price higher so be careful with gold okay uh, gold off and then we can look at New Zealand dollar and New Zealand dollar how are we we yeah we've got a good score okay we've got a good score on New Zealand dollar it's just, actually it's the strongest one which is really interesting okay uh, Oh, I don't think I can show you the data, but you can see the orange line. We are slightly higher than the week prior. Yeah, I can't show you the data, but you can see that we're stronger than the week prior. We are below zero, but you know we're still um, we're ascending slightly on the orange line, and we've got a good score. So New Zealand dollar could be a good one to look at, uh, perhaps against the USD, perhaps against the yen. Um, so you know you've got a good score there. And uh, we're coming to the end of the video, so we'll just look at the Swiss franc. And um, Swiss franc is kind of negative, and I can't show you the data. Oh, 25,000 um, minus and the week prior, it can't show you. <laughs> um, but we've got a week score, and they've sold off slightly. So theoretically, we could look at for a bit of Swiss weakness. So maybe something like pound Swiss or kiwi swiss or euro swiss or even aussie swiss you know look at those sort of permutations and it's worth talking about permutations that you don't have to look at dollar or yen you could look at anything you know we can just look at any any combination you know perhaps you're interested in um aussie pound you know and then you think oh is there any setups there well there was one back here <laughs> but there's no sign of a crossover and we are looking for crossovers and then that's how you get your trade setups um so you know you know you don't have to look at the yen or dollar you can look at any any combination perhaps you're interested in the you know the euro pound maybe and uh, you can see we're quite choppy and they're both ascending as well so i think eg the euro pound could be a little bit tricky we know that the pound's stronger than the euro but they're both ascending so you know you be a little bit careful and we know that the euro and pound have both got good scores uh, positive scores so hopefully this helps if you want to get access to the sheet just let me know and by subscribing to patreon you get the sheet which you can see here and you also get this cot data file as well so use, use them side by side and you get some really good setups and um, that's today's video and i wish you a good day and i'll see you soon